Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome to this week's card. Today I have a really super simple watercolor technique for you, and I'm serious this time. This is really simple. So anyway, I'm going to be using the Blooming Garden stamp set by Penny Black. I'm going to use these little flowers right here. I'm going to pull them off. And then I also have this stamp set by Simon Says Stamp called Friendly Flowers, and it has this really great thinking of you sentiment. It's really thin and pretty, so I'm going to be using that. And also the Mama Elephant Femme Frames. I'm going to be using the inside panel, so it has some stitching in there. I've got it adhered to my magnetic card storage uh, by, by Stampin' Storage, and I'll have a link to that on my blog. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is take my die and lay it down on some Strathmore watercolor paper. And I'm going to take a pencil and draw an outline around this die. And this is just so that I know where to stamp my flowers. I want them the same distance from the top and the bottom. I'm going to be using some pumice stone distress ink. And this ink is kind of a grayish ink. It's, it's light enough to where you can't really see it, but it's dark enough to where you can see it a little bit. So um, it's a nice outline. So I'm going to be stamping the top and bottom just kind of randomly. And now I'm going to get ready to color. Now I've got two distress markers. The first is worn lipstick, which is kind of a light pink. And I'm going to be coloring the inside of each petal. Now the first flower I'm doing here, I'm not laying down too much color, just a little bit. And, uh, and I'm kind of making some thin lines kind of pushing outward toward the outside of the petal. Now I'm going to be doing uh, a few different flowers for you and each one's going to be a little bit different and that way we get a little variety in the bunch of flowers. This is scattered straw and I'm just going to color the edge of each of these petals. Now I'm not going to touch them, I'm not going to touch the worn lipstick and the scattered straw, I'm just going to leave a little bit of a white gap in between. And this is in real time by the way. Now the next thing I'm going to do is very simple. I'm just going to take a brush and some water and I'm going to load my brush up with quite a bit of water and I'm just going to tap each petal one at a time. And I'm not going to do any blending and uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to uh, kind of swipe the brush on the paper. I'm just going to tap it on there. And uh, you can see I'm using quite a bit of water. And you want to make sure that you uh, color, well not color, but apply water all the way to the edge of the flower. And the reason why you want to do that is because if you don't and you kind of go halfway, you'll see a water stain where the color stops and it's not going to look good. So you want the water to cover the whole entire flower. Alright, I'm going to take a heat tool and I'm going to heat this up just to make it dry faster, but you don't have to do this. In fact, um, for all the flowers I did off camera, I just let them dry naturally, just because I like the way I like to do that because um, that way the paper doesn't warp at all. Okay, so as you can see, the colors blended all by themselves, and you didn't really have to do anything. Now I wanted a little bit of a black center here, and my black soot distress ink did not work, so um, I trashed that and got my um, Stampin' Up black marker. Now this tip is a little bit thicker than I liked, but it was what was on my desk, so that's what I grabbed. Anyway, I'm just drawing some little lines in the middle. So my next flower, what I'm going to do is I'm going to color the worn lipstick much thicker and I'm pressing down a little harder. Uh, there's more ink that I'm laying down on the paper so you can get a little bit of a variety here. Uh, I'm going to take my scattered straw and I'm going to color the edge of the petals and I'm going to color it all the way so that it touches my worn lipstick. And what this is going to do is it's going to, the colors are going to blend together. You'll get more of an orangey um, blend because the colors are right next to each other and there's no space. So again, I'm going to take my paintbrush and put a ton of water on here. And you actually don't have to wait at all to dry it. If you're going to dry it with your heat tool, uh, you can just heat it as soon as uh, you're done putting the water on. And notice that I'm going all the way to the edge. And if you go over the edge, it's no big deal because this is watercolor and it's not supposed to look perfect anyway. You can see how thick the water is that I'm putting on here. So the only thing I would be careful of is um, if you're using a heat tool, is not to get um, too crazy with it that the water actually blows past your uh, outline on your stamp. So don't hold it too close. 
Alright, you can see when this dries um, that it's got a lot more blending going on and, it, and you get more of an orangey color. And again, I'm going to take my black marker and I'm just going to draw a few lines in the middle just randomly. Okay, now for my next one, I'm going to leave a little bit of a white center just to see how that works. Um, so I'm going to use my pink in the middle as usual. And then I'm going to use the scattered straw and I'm going to make the colors pretty close together. Now when I add, when I leave this white center, you'll see that when I put the water on, the water will pool up in the middle uh, along with the color and create a really nice dark center. Just tapping in my color here, or my water. Now if you wanted your colors to blend a little bit more, you could swish your brush around right there where the border is, but I didn't really think I needed to do that. So as you can see as it dries, it's got that really pretty dark pink center. And when I went over it with the black, I just made sure that you could still see a little bit of white there. Now I'm going to show you one more, um, and this one I made just a little bit of pink in the middle um, and then mostly yellow on the outside with a big white gap uh, between the two colors. And so this flower is going to be a little bit more faded. Um, and I really had fun experimenting with all these flowers and doing them different ways. Um, I usually create a card off camera and then I create one on camera. But this one was the first one that I created, so I didn't do a practice one here, which is why I'm kind of experimenting with all these different ways of doing the flowers. And the reason why this is so easy is because you don't know have you don't have to think about anything. You don't have to think about um, perspective, you don't have to think about shadowing, you don't have to think about what petals are behind what other petals. Um, it's just so easy, you just tap on the water and let it dry. So when I dried this with the heat tool, you'll see that the center really came out dark because of the white that I left in the middle, and so I think this turned out to be my favorite flower. And um, when I went off camera, I ended up doing pretty much all the flowers with a white center in the middle, just because I like the way it turned out. So you can see this up close and how each flower is just a little bit different. And I think that adds to the interest of the whole, the whole card. So I'm going to go off and finish up all these flowers. I use the same technique on all of them. And now I'm going to start working on the little buds. There's the green part of the bud, which I'm going to use forest moss and shabby shutters on. For my forest moss, um, I'm using the fine tip. Now with my worn lipstick and scattered straw, I use the brush tip. Um, and I'm also using the brush tip here on the shabby shutters. But the area is so tiny, and I just wanted a little bit of a dark area, which is why I use the fine tip on the forest moss. But I'm going to do the same thing I did with the flowers. So once I get a color, some color laid down with my marker, I'm just going to tap it a little bit with my brush and some water, and just let it dry on its own. For the stems, some of the stems that were thin, like here, I'm just using some forest moss and then tapping it with water. And then some of the other ones that are thicker, I'll put some forest moss on the left and shabby shutters on the right and apply the water. I've also got some colored buds here and I'm gonna color half of them with the pink and then half with the yellow. Um, and actually some of them later on, as you can see, that small one on the right is really small for two colors. So when I went off to do the rest of the card, I did some of them all pink, some of them all yellow. And I just tapped on my water and let it dry. Now
now that my water uh, watercolor flowers are done, I'm going to use, yes, you guessed it, my magnetic platform. Everybody's been saying, why don't you have this? Um, and I didn't purchase it because, as you can see, my acrylic plates are really worn and warped. They're the plates I got with the machine when I first bought it a few years ago. Um, and I was worried that the magnetic platform wouldn't work because my plates were so warped. Anyway, um, it turns out that it works great. So as you can see, I laid it down here and I turned it upside down and it did not move at all. So I really wish I would have purchased this sooner. You can see my other plate is just as bad, um, but it works just fine. So I'm really happy with my purchase. Um, all right, so let's see, I've got my panel cut here. It has some stitching on the inside. It's a really, really nice die. And I'm gonna take my sentiment with some Simon Says Stamp black ink and I'm going to stamp it right there in the middle. Uh, I'm going to use some Stampin' Up! Crumb Cake and my Martha Stewart scoreboard, which I keep handy on my desk for all my cards. And you can see I'm thinking here, I'm just going to put it on the, the crumb cake, and I thought, well, I needed some black around it, a thick black, well, maybe not. And I thought, well, maybe a thin outline, and then that's what I decided to go with. So I've got a thin border um, that I'm matting with some black, and the reason why I ended up choosing that was because of the thin sentiment that was black, and I just needed something to balance that. So I'm gonna adhere this panel with some Stampin' Up! Dimensionals, just some foam adhesive on my crumb cake base. And so that's it, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you try it at home, it's really super simple, and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.